Damn, that's going to be a pretty big wave. I might move a little bit just before I get soaked. Damn, son. Yeah. Oh, so, hello everybody. I'm just out for a little ride. I've got to go to the shops. And uh, I thought, why not stick the camera on? It's not something I've had the opportunity to do. Um, just to chat and have fun for a little while because I've been very busy doing other bits and pieces. But finally that's all done, so I can now just enjoy a ride, get on with the XJ6. <sighs> this, oh, this is a Triumph 900 that um, Triumph lent me for the winter, basically. <laughs> uh, it's one of their press bikes and they just said, hey, would you like a press bike until next year, like early January? I'm like, yeah, why would I say no to that? <laughs> I was given a few options, and the reason I went with the Tiger 900 was because I've ridden the 12, and I very much enjoyed that. But you know me, I prefer smaller engines anyway, and I wanted to try the 900 out. And as the uh, the 850 is coming out next year, and I should get my hands on one of those uh, relatively soon on, I hope, it's a, it gives me the opportunity to be able to have ridden this bike to give a comparison of that one. Uh, as I say, Triumph UK lent it to me directly. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And I've got it until... Uh, yeah, say like early January-ish. To just use as my machine. Uh, it's a dangerous thing. It's almost like they're trying to trap me or something because one of the bikes that I looked at and thought, you know, because I've looked at my XJ6 and my DRZ and be like, what if I try to combine those two bikes together? What would I end up with? And it's something like this. You know? There may be something slightly weird about this video, I've just thought though, because I've got the, uh, the Insta360 ONE X2 here. Uh, that Insta360 sent me to do the review on recently and I've just done videos on that. That's in fact one of the things that's been eating up my time. Intensive testing of that camera in a short amount of time rather than just using it in normal use because they wanted a video, a video earlier. Um, pain in the butt. But the thing is, whereas normally I'd mount this on something solid on the bike, this is on the bars. So it kind of moves <laughs> with the bars and it's a bit weird. This is just going to be another one of my sort of rando videos talking about a few different things and so I've been pretty busy with uh, sorting the camera stuff out. My birthday fell in the middle of there. Uh, I worked on my birthday but I did take some of the weekend off um, to celebrate with Reno. That was great. Um, and I've had to do some Christmas shopping and stuff, you know, because Christmas is coming up. So it's been a busy few days. Uh, but I have found time to play a little bit of uh, Cyberpunk 2077 and I know many of you have been playing it too. Uh, it is the first title I have ever bought on PC, other than maybe Kerbal, because my PCs of the past couldn't handle these sorts of things. But my uprated machine can play it no problem. So, uh, that's a benefit to having a better editing rig. It can actually play games. It's using a Ryzen 9 and uh, a 2060. And I'm able to run it in like 14... I, I, I can't remember exactly. Is it 1440? I don't know. It's reasonable frame rate, not like trying to whack it up to... 4k or anything because uh, my screen doesn't do that uh, but it can run it in like ultra with um, ray tracing and all that sort of stuff on at 60 fps no problems and yeah it's been glitchy but i've been watching the reviews because i've never been on this side of like the pc gaming things and i've seen all the controversy in the past about people getting very mad about games and blah blah, blah. and um I've, I've never been first hand in it to see what it's been like and obviously, you may have heard, that game is very glitchy. On the Xbox and PlayStation, I think it's absolutely terrible. On the PC, yeah, I've had a few little glitches here and there. Um, I've had to restart a couple of missions, you know, lose maybe maybe, maybe 10 minutes worth of uh, efforts. But it's actually not been that bad. Uh, but as I say, what's been interesting is to see how before the game came out, everyone was crying that the game hadn't come out and they were saying, well, it's not ready yet. And they were saying, well, it's been delayed again. It's been delayed again. It's been delayed again. And then they bring it out and everyone says, you brought it out too early because it's not ready yet. <laughs> and also people are so, they're, they're so butthurt about all of this. It's like, I've, I've never, I didn't realize how emotional PC gamers or how should we say gamers can be over a game. Um, number one rule, don't tell people you've got a game until it's ready. Or at least until it's pretty damn ready. I mean, I know what they want to do is, you know, build hype for the game, but unfortunately, you have to time hype building very carefully because you can build hype 
And if you don't deliver the, the, the thing at just the pinnacle of that time, interest starts falling off. And now what we've got going on is a lot of people basically slating the game, saying it's absolutely awful. I don't think it's awful. I think it's a good game. I really, really enjoy it. I can see myself playing the thing for months on end because simply there is that many things to do in it. Sure, the single storyline isn't that long as I understand it, but, you know, I like it. it it's, an, it's an all right game. But it does have bugs and they are going to have to fix them. I suppose that's another thing actually is that I'm not really exposed to the hype train. Sure I heard of this game coming but I never really got on the hype train because it wasn't until earlier this year I had a PC that could even run something like this. You know all my life I've been a console gamer and I've said how I didn't want to play PC games because I didn't think it was a fair platform because you know obviously like if you're playing a multiplayer game one of the nice things about being on Xbox is everyone's playing on an Xbox. Level ground, level playing field. When you've got PCs, you've got people that have got much better machines, they're getting better frame rates, better internet connections, better, you know, just better use of the game. So that surely is going to give them somewhat of an advantage. And I never wanted to be in that, you know, feel like I'm not winning because I haven't got the most up-to-date PC or something like that. That may not be entirely the case. And when it comes to single-player games, of course, that's really got nothing to do with it. And that's something I didn't think about in the past. But I only ever thought PC gaming as multiplayer rather than single-player. Um, but I have played a couple of games on PC now because I got the uh, Xbox Pass for PC. I'm going to play a few games and the experience of using an Xbox controller with the PC on a 144Hz screen, you know, um, with the mind-bogglingly good graphics in comparison to uh, Xbox. And there's nothing wrong with Xbox graphics, but you can really tell the difference. I can really, really tell the difference now between that PC. Um, I'm really enjoying the PC experience, as it were. And obviously recently I had the option of getting 2077 and was like, well, should I get it on Xbox or PC? And I was like, you know what, I, I, I want to try it on PC. You know, say, so it's the first PC game I've ever bought. I just, I thought it would probably be better and it is better as it turns out it's a good move because obviously the Xbox version is real glitchy. So yes, I'm not going to say I'm a PC gaming convert, but I do, I have seen the light and I'm following it at the moment. <laughs> The fact that you can use an Xbox controller with it is what's like, I think, pretty much sealed the deal for me because I really want to be able to use the Xbox controller. Well, let's see what you're made of, Tiger. Woo! That's a lot more aggressive than you're expecting it to be. Damn. Oh, that's slippery as hell. Okay, I've got to say, I love the engine in this thing. This isn't, well, I'm not really doing a first ride on this as such. I'm just going to make videos on it um, and use it and then I'll do a review at the end and it'll be like a, a living with review because I've never had it for weeks. But it's definitely got a, uh, a larier tone than I was expecting. <laughs> oh, warm grips, warm seat. This, is, this might also be one of the reasons why I said, yeah, sure, that's the one I want for the winter. And this is the winter machine, heated everything. Screen, I can get it covered in mud. Because it's not mud. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll look after it, I'll keep it clean. Well, I won't keep it clean, but I will clean it. <laughs> that is actually one thing I do when I return a bike after I've done a review, I normally give it a good clean. Sometimes there's examples where I've, you know, I've had to film right up to the last day and I physically have not had time to clean it because I need to make sure the video is correct before the bike goes back but most of the time I do give them a clean uh, I don't think from, from the reactions I've had from some of the companies is I don't think many people do that I'm like oh, I gave it a clean they're like what <laughs> you cleaned it and they look at it and they're like Jesus you did clean it it's, it's, it's properly clean I'm like oh yeah you limit it you know it's only polite SV650 see if I was right from just seeing that tail part Damn, I'm good. Well, I'm not that good. 
Come on, Chief. Tomorrow I'm going to film another episode on the XJ6. Finally, I can actually get to doing some work on that. I guess it's going to be cleaning to start with and uh, maybe rebuilding the brakes. Yeah, that'd be a good thing to do. Sort the brakes out, clean all that up. Get the wheel off maybe, get the chain and sprockets off. That is something I've realised recently though, is that I am but one man and when I do every single job for this channel, you know, everything from like the research to the editing, filming, presenting, it, just everything. Um, that has become the number one limiting factor on what I can do. Because I have to actually spend most of my time editing, not doing. It can be a little bit frustrating at times. And I totally get why a lot of the bigger YouTubers have editors because you know they're making enough money to pay an editor to do the job and they just have to just sit record the video send it to someone and they edit it admittedly uh i don't think i'd really want someone editing my videos because well i like doing them my way I, 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 you know other people have got different styles and sure some people can do it good but it's not it doesn't feel like it's my video if i'm not editing it myself and the other problem is if you're doing a video about something that's technical, I don't know how someone who doesn't know about that subject could edit that video because they wouldn't know what was and wasn't right or like, you know, well, how it should be structured to make it make the most sense of that subject. I guess that's why most like engineering-y, sort of building-y sort of programs on TV tend to be pretty basic and rubbish. Um, you know, they don't go into massive details because it's just very complicated if you want to go into the true details. Now, some of the stuff that Richard Hammond's done, you know, they talk about it being a science program, like, I don't know, is it like mega engineering or something? I can't, I can't remember. And they make out that it's like a real scientific based program, and you're like, this is made for 10 year olds. I swear to God, this is. <laughs> this is a very pleasant bike to ride, I will say that. Just very easy. It's, I mean, it's like the, uh, the 1200, but just feels a little bit more lively, if you know what I mean. Freedom! They won't come down here, thankfully, because it's flooded. <laughs> now, I don't want to get splashed, so I have to be seen. Da! Don't you freaking splash me. Lovely people, thank you very much for not splashing me. Nice people, thank you for restoring my faith in humanity a little bit. If you remember a while ago, the last time I sort of slowed down so I could uh, let someone come through or something like that, and they just came flying through it and just covered me. <laughs> oh dear. I just realised I'm like sat here and I've not said anything for ages. I'm like, I'm recording a video. Why are you not vlogging? And it's just because I'm just enjoying riding in the dry on a bike and not just, well, it was just to the shops to be fair, but not like, you know, 10 minutes to the shops. One of the nice things about these Triumphs, and all the Triumphs I've ridden, they're all so easy to ride. A little too easy in ways. Well, there we go. This is just another one of those rando vlogs that I do, but I just need to go for a ride, and it's just so nice to be out on the bike. And it's also going to be very nice to get some progression on the XJ6, which is what, as I say, I'm going to film tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button. I really would appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you'd really like to help support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. My God, that was close. Anyway, as I say, like the video, subscribe if you're new here. And if you'd like to help support this channel and the build, please consider joining my Patreon. Links in, links in the description. Also, I will mention here, I have an Amazon storefront, which basically has products that I use in it. Uh, if you are interested in, it, in any of these products and you purchase it through my store, I make a little bit of money from it. 
you don't have to buy anything on there. I'm just saying, if you want to know some of the products I use, because people ask me all the time, and I'm just like, it's in the description, it's in the description, it's in the description. I even made a store so you could uh, you can go and buy it there. What camera is that? Anyway, in true recent fashion, I am indeed going to two Desco two Descos. I was going to say double Tesco's, and then I was thinking of double, double Decker. And Jesus Christ, that brought back some memories from the old days of vlogging when Baron used to vlog and stuff. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, uh, yeah, I got to go to Tesco's again. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll join you in the <laughs> join you in the next one. Also, thanks to Triumph for the loan. I'll try not to get it too dirty.